Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for another update to our series that explores current graphics card prices. We last provided you with a look at the market in October, and well, we're back today with a December overview of how prices have changed, what to expect in the future, and the current best value cards. In terms of value, what you'll see in this video isn't gonna differ greatly from Steve's top five best graphics cards video he published a couple of weeks back, but it will provide a bit of extra information and there has been a few interesting trends to emerge in this last month in terms of pricing. So let's start this exploration with a look at Nvidia's current GPU lineup. In this table, you can see the lowest available prices for graphics cards across the year from May, July, October, and now December, plus each card's MSRP, all in US dollars. What you'll notice immediately is that most cards have come down in price since October, when we gathered data just after the release of Nvidia's GeForce RTX 2070. The GTX 1050 Ti hasn't changed all that much, but both GTX 1060s are a good 10% cheaper, while the GTX 1070 gets a hefty 12% reduction. Meanwhile, the GTX 1070 Ti, which has been great value for months now, has only dropped in price slightly, which isn't a surprise considering a lot of people have been recommending them. The big things to note from Nvidia's Pascal cards are firstly that the GTX 1070 is now more appropriately priced. Back in October, there was only a $10 or so difference between the 1070 and 1070 Ti, which didn't make it worth buying a 1070. Today, that difference is more like $45, which brings the 1070 back into discussions. But the bigger news is the exit of the GTX 1080 and GTX 1080 Ti from the market. In October, both these cards were readily available and competing very strongly with the RTX 2070 and RTX 2080 respectively. In both cases, we recommended the older Pascal cards over the new Turing products as they simply provide a better bang for buck. Today, both the 1080 and 1080 Ti are basically gone from the market. There are a few available at retailers like Newegg and Amazon, but very inflated prices and the cards will not be restocked when sold out. This isn't a huge surprise. Nvidia will have been wanting to get rid of 1080s and 1080 Ti's in the market as quickly as possible, leaving their new RTX cards unchallenged by older products. Those who were able to purchase either a 1080 or 1080 Ti before they sold out got a fantastic deal. Anyone wanting that sort of performance today is essentially stuck with the RTX line. That isn't necessarily bad news though, because both the RTX 2070 and RTX 2080 are now available at their MSRPs of $500 and $700 respectively. The RTX 2080 coming down to $700 is relatively new development. The RTX 2070 has been at $500 for a little while now, but the 2080 has been very slow to reach its MSRP. And at $700, the 2080 isn't offering amazing value, but it's at least now matched matching where GTX 1080 Ti's were priced at the end of that Pascal card's life. However, the RTX 2080 Ti is still massively overpriced. No card has ever been seen at the $1,000 MSRP. In fact, since October prices have actually gone up with the cheapest cards now sitting at around $1,300, so $100 above the Founders Edition price. The reason for this inflated price still seems to be related to stock. There just aren't enough 2080 Ti's being made, so we'll be stuck with high prices for a while to come. It's also worth remembering that there's a reason why cards like the GTX 1070 and GTX 1060 6GB are currently priced below their MSRP. That's because we are expecting Nvidia to launch their successors in the 2060 and 2050 in January. The 2060 looks to be replacing the 1070 and the 2050 replacing the 1060. So while you can get a good deal on those Pascal cards now, like with the 1080 and 1080 Ti, we don't expect the 1060 or 1070 to be around that much longer. But that does bring up the question, should you buy a card like the GTX 1070 now, or wait until we see what the 2060 is going to provide. I'll leave that one up to you guys, but considering you shouldn't have to wait too much longer, it might be worth simply waiting and seeing what NVIDIA has in store in a month or so. I think discounted Pascal cards will still be available around the launch of mid-range Turing cards as well. All right, let's talk AMD GPUs now, and it's here that we have some great value in the mid-range. The RX 570 and RX 580 have been available below the MSRPs for the last month or so now, and both offer screaming good value. The RX 570 at $150 is an absolute steal, and has come down in price by $10 since October, while the RX 580 8GB has received a significant 20% price cut, pushing it under $200 for the first time. Either are phenomenal value right now. 
However, it's not as good news for the rest of AMD's lineup. Vega cards have actually increased in price slightly, up 4% since October. I suspect that's due to Vega cards receiving nice discounts around the launch of Nvidia's RTX line. Now that those discounts are no longer in effect, both cards are back around or slightly above the MSRP. Meanwhile, the freshly released RX 590 is still $280, which is nowhere near a good price for that card. At this stage, we're not expecting any new AMD GPUs in the near future, so I hope AMD can continue to price the RX 570 and RX 580 aggressively and keep stock at healthy levels. They're pretty much crushing Nvidia in that $150 to $250 mid-range space right now, though that could change come the release of Nvidia's new Turing-based mid-range offerings. The next big release from AMD should be Navi GPUs, manufactured using TSMC's 7 nanometer technology. We're hoping those GPUs provide competitive options through the high end, as well as a flagship GPU to compete with the RTX 2080 Ti. But really, we don't have any idea what the lineup will look like at this stage. In any case, if you want to buy a GPU right now, there's not much point waiting to see what Navi will bring because you might be waiting a little while there. All right, I've already talked a bit about which products in these lineups offer the best value, but let's now take a look at some cost per frame charts across five recently released titles using 1440p and Ultra settings. Starting with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we see both the RX 570 and RX 580 providing elite value at the top end of the charts, beating out both the GTX 1060 3GB and 6GB variants. The RX 570 is slightly better value, but either option is great for 1080p gaming. Meanwhile, the RX 590 is worse value than the RTX 2070 here. For 1440p gaming, it's the GTX 1070 beating out the GTX 1070 Ti and Vega 56 at the moment. Previously, Vega 56 was quite competitive with these cards, but that's not really the case anymore. Then at the top end in this title, unfortunately, Vega 64 isn't great value up against the RTX 2070 or RTX 2080. Forza Horizon 4 is a much more optimized title than Assassin's Creed, and here we're seeing the RX 570 and 580 take an even stronger lead, while the RX 590 is okay value, but still not worth recommending over the 580. Then for 1440p class gaming, Vega 56 is very competitive, but it's edged out in terms of bang for buck by the GTX 1070. Vega 56 is faster, but also $80 more expensive there. That said, in this title, Vega 56 is the way to go compared to the 1070 Ti. Vega 64 is a better buy than the RTX 2070 in this title. Both cards are the same price, but Vega 64 is faster, while the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti are unchallenged in terms of performance. In Battlefield 5, we're looking again at the RX 570 and RX 580 destroying the rest of the field here, while Nvidia's upper mid-range cards in the GTX 1070 and 1070 Ti form the best options around that $300 to $400 mark. Then at the upper end, it's a close call, but the RTX 2070 is just slightly better value than Vega 64, though you could go either way here. Hitman 2 is again very favorable to the RX 570 and RX 580. They are much better value than the GTX 1060 in this title. However, Vega isn't as strong here. The GTX 1070 and 1070 Ti offer better value than Vega 56, while the RTX 2070 gets our nod over Vega 64. Finally, we have Just Cause 4, the least optimized title from this selection of games, and well, it's really no different to what I've been saying. AMD's Polaris cards take the mid-range crown, while Nvidia is better value in the upper price brackets. Again, all this data aligns perfectly with what Steve showed in his top five best GPUs video. He recommended both the RX 570 and RX 580 in that $150 to $250 range, and the GTX 1070 Ti at around $400. I'd also throw in the GTX 1070 at $340, which has come down in price since our top five video, and across a handful of today's games is now slightly better value than the 1070 Ti. Above that price tier, value starts to drop away and you're left with diminishing returns for every extra dollar you spend. These days, the RTX 2070 isn't a terrible deal at $500. In most games, it's a better choice than the identically priced Vega 64. Meanwhile, both the RTX 2080 and especially the RTX 2080 Ti are the least attractive cards in terms of bang for buck, but they are also completely unchallenged in terms of performance, so if you want that level of power, you'll have to spend big. However, at least it's nice to see the RTX 2080 now sitting at its MSRP for some models. I guess that's it for this one. As we've been doing all year, we'll continue to monitor graphics card prices into 2019 and revisit this topic early next year, likely with a few new GPUs on the market. If you like our content, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Plus, you can support us on Patreon to get access to our Discord chat and monthly live streams. And I'll catch you in the next one.